Yo, what's up, dudes? How's it going? Well, this is like the 10th time I've shot this video, but I'm, I, I'm going to get it right this time. I've got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> uh, as many of you have seen in my live shows, I have been playing this for maybe about six weeks now. I've had done it in at least two or three live shows. So there's a lot of footage out there of this guitar with a lot of different examples. But I, I thought I'd come and give it the, you know, the full video review treatment. Um, any of you have, that have seen the live shows know that I really like this guitar. Um, this has been a um, remarkably um, uh, f good fit for me, <laughs> I would say, in terms of like uh, the neck style I like and uh, just the overall feel and sound of the guitar. I've been really impressed with, and uh, it's going to be tough to send her back, but I figure we'll give a uh, we'll give it a proper send off with a nice video. Um, you've got the open face, open back, uh, hip shot locking tuners, which I found to be very smooth and uh, easy to work with. You've got a tusk, um, you know, super slippery graph tech nut, uh, stainless steel frets and ebony fingerboard, these nice glow in the dark side dots. It's a maple neck flanked by mahogany wings on the body and topped with this super nice um, flame maple cap, and it's a proper cap. It's not a veneer, uh, and it's nice and carved. Um, I just found the, the whole thing to be uh, a really nice, uh, well-made instrument. Um, things, little things like um, the, it's a U-channel on the on the frets. In other words, they don't they don't cut the fret slot all the way to the end of the fingerboard. They uh, they only start in a little bit, and then they end before the end. Uh, so they, it's more like a U-shape, right? It goes in a little bit, cuts down, goes in, and then back up again. So when they mount the frets, they have to cut the tangs off a little bit uh, to get them in. And uh, then they mount the fret in there. And it's a lot more work to do that than to just cut the slot all the way across and stick a, a fret in there and file the ends off with a massive filer that does the whole side of the neck at once. That's a lot faster, and that's what most like low-end instruments will do. A high-end instrument like this, or at least a very, like, a medium, I don't know if this is their high-end, I guess their British standard line is their high-end, this is more of, like, their middle road. But even so, I mean, it is a pro line, and you get um, things like that U-cut channel. Um, none of my fenders have that, um, except for my Japanese one that has the binding on the side, it's under the binding. But usually they cut all the way straight across, and you see that little slot on the side. Um, and very often they cut it back and they fill it in with putty. They do all kinds of things. But in the winter, what can happen is it'll pop out. Uh, the, the neck will shrink just a little bit from the dryness. The frets, of course, remain the same size and they, they pop out the end a little bit. Um, I've had this guitar here for the last, say, six weeks or eight weeks or so. And um, I have to say, we've had some of the driest weather of the year. I mean, we're talking dew points in the single digits, maybe even negative territory for a day or so. And uh, nothing. It's just been stable as stable can be. Uh, I didn't have to really adjust anything on the guitar. Um, the action might be a little high. For, for what people like, but I like my action slightly high. I find that most instruments show up and the action is a little too low for my liking. So this was like my dream setup, like right out of the box. But I could see somebody who likes really low action to say, you know what, I would prefer to, to, to set my action lower. But when people always say, how is it set up? That's like saying, like, was the mirror, you know, in the seat on a car adjusted to your liking before you sat down in it? It's like th there are some adjustments that you have to make for your own personal taste. And I find that, you know, string height is just one of them. Uh, I like my stuff a little bit higher. I know other people really hate that. So it's really just a matter of personal preference. I wouldn't get too caught up in whether or not, uh, you know, the action was at your preferred height when you picked up a guitar. It was for me with this one. Um, and the intonation has been, you know, spot on. So uh, I think that's what you, you mostly want when you get a guitar out of the box. You want a, you know, sort of a middle-of-the-road action uh, that would appeal to most people and... Um, properly intonated. 
And, and then everything after that is pretty much, I think, up to the user. You know, if you want your action a little bit lower, a little bit higher, um, that's really on the user to set. Just like it would be in a vehicle if you bought a car. It's like, I, I would find it strange for someone to say, yeah, I got in the car and that seat was just way too back. <laughs> it's like, well, we, we can fix that, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm running through uh, my normal TH3 clean patch, which is an AC30. Um, I got to, I've been fooling around with this rev generator, and I just happen to have it in the loop, so I have it on right now. We'll turn the rev off. There's the bridge pickup. This is the bridge with this outer coil. How much uh, brighter it gets, more acoustic. Here's the two humbuckers, much warmer it gets. Here's this pickup with this outer coil. Again, it gets brighter, a little more twangy. And then just the neck. And then we can just go through the whole thing again with the distortion on. And this is again the neck. So I we'll guess we'll call that position five, right? Position four. Again, you can just hear the twang come right out. That's this pickup in this outer coil. Just adding that extra coil. That's a lot more twang. Again, both humbuckers. Versus. A little brighter there. Slightly warmer there. And then here we go to position two. A little brighter still. And then lastly, we'll go to the... Um, bridge full on how much stronger it's amazing how the single coil from this pickup tempers the output of this pickup a little bit I think the guitar sounds great, um, if I'm not repeating myself enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. I gotta say, this is, um, <clears throat> you know, this, this guitar has just been a, um, it's my style of guitar, right? It's a slightly slimmer neck, not quite as slim as an Ibanez, but, you know, certainly slimmer than like a, um, it's more like a modern C um, than like a, a traditional or a, or a vintage C. Um, in fact, I wouldn't even call this a C. I'd, they call it a C. I I'm, I'm, feel slightly more like a D in that it's a little bit flatter in the back um, than what I would consider a traditional C. But, you know, don't, don't hold me to it. Just check one out and see what you think. I'm a fan. I like the volute in the back of the neck, too. I mean, you got a nice, uh, you know headstock tilt back here and that volute makes me feel a lot better uh, than like what an Ivan S neck would be and we know that a lot of them cracked exactly in that spot so I like the volute it's a it's a nice touch uh, just one more thing before we wrap this video up um, I gotta say a few words about the case I thought the case was amazing um, 
it's weird for me to even gush about the case like this, but uh, I, I've owned a lot of cases in my life. I've spent, you know, $200 on a nice Fender Tweed case only to have the latches be, you know, a little stiff and, you know, a little tilted to one side and they feel like overly loose when they're not, you know, clamped. This Chapman case, those buckles were like smooth as silk. I was like, wow, this is like, I mean, you felt like you were getting a premium experience before you even cracked the top. And, um, and it's not like a, it's not like a box for your iPhone, right? Where you, once you take it out of the box, oh, well, you're going to use that case over and over and over again. Uh, it, you, for a lot of people, it'll be the main place where it, it's carried or, or, you know, or stored. So it was just a nice touch to get a, a, a Tolex covered wood case, thank you, not using uh, plastic or canvas, um, and to use just a straight up old school uh, Tolex covered wood case. I was impressed. I was impressed enough that I'm mentioning the case in the video. And I think I mentioned it in the live shows a couple of times too. Um, it was nice. I was like, nice case. That, that's a reenactment. All right, dudes, there you have it. Chapman ML1 Pro Modern. Uh, the traditional will give you three single coils, if you're wondering what the modern versus the traditional is. Modern, two humbuckers, traditional, three single coils. This is in the sun finish. It's also in lunar finish. Um, and this was courtesy of Octave Music. I'll leave a link down in the description. And uh, there you have it. I uh, can't say enough good things about this guitar. My uh, only regret is uh, I have to send it back. All right, guys. As always, thanks so much for hanging out. And rock on.